Hi. What I want to do with this video is revise some of the basic ideas that we learnt in year 12 about how to interpret a geological map and crucially how we can draw a cross section from this geological map. Now to be able to do this we do need a little bit of kit. Just simple measuring and drawing materials. Make sure you're equipped. A geological map is going to show us our typical structures. The maps you're going to find in your exam will contain most of these features. They may be in a slightly different um, orientation, slightly different form, but they will all, they will be there. So we need to learn to recognize the patterns that tell us these things exist. Make sure you know what each of these um, geological features actually is. Okay, we're going to have a look at this really quite simple geological map to see how we can unpick the um, geological history uh, and what this uh, map would look like if we took a slice through it. Our first job is to look at the orientation of any sedimentary rocks that are here. In particular, can we see the core of any major folds here? So that's the where we get some symmetry in beds, and where we start to see uh, repetition in uh, sequences of beds. This particular map, you can see, has uh, a fold axial plane uh, marked on the screen now. We can see it's an anticline. Um, we have the oldest bed in the middle, and we have dips uh, of beds going away from the axial plane. Notice how the dips are unequal. This eastern dim, uh, limb has a steeper dip, 40 degrees. So therefore the outcrop width uh, of the beds on the eastern limb is narrower than the ones we see on the western limb, where the dip is only half as much. It may be a good idea for you to be annotating your map as we go. It's good practice in the exam as well. When you discover something about a feature on your map, to just put a little note on the map it makes it much easier to get to the when we get to the cross section stage later. Okay, having identified the features in the sedimentary rocks, we now start thinking about the igneous rocks. So our first job is to identify the igneous rocks. Now that might come from the key, or it may come from um, specimens that you've been working on already. Again, if you've been if you've done that, annotate your map as you go. You, you're going to find um, it will help all the way through. If we look on this particular map, we've got three different intrusions marked. We can work out what they are by looking at their outcrop patterns. So we've got a large, irregular, discordant pluton. It's got a metamorphic aureole around it, a very obvious feature. Intrusion T there uh, is a dike. Uh, it's sheet-like, it's discordant uh, with the country rock. And finally, intrusion R there, we can see uh, it's concordant with the country rock and therefore is a sill. Be careful you don't mix up sills though with lava flows. There will be some evidence in your exam if you need to differentiate between the two. Okay, having identified the igneous rocks, we can now look for unconformities. For this we look at the outcrop pattern. We look for beds that don't fit, that cut across uh, older beds. Often we'll see uh, a, a lower dip of beds above an unconformity compared with those beds beneath an unconformity. Here we can see an unconformity at the base uh, of the bed labelled H, which we can also see is horizontal. The beds beneath that are either a granite, so we have a Thing called a heterolithic unconformity, 
or we've got steeply dipping sedimentary rocks. We also look for faults. Now faults are usually quite obvious because we see some displacement uh, in the rocks. We see different types of rocks either side of a fault or we see the same sequence moved. On this map it's really subtle. This is a fault. We can see it's trending um, or striking north-south. Um, we can also see that there's actually a repetition in the beds but it's not the same as a fold because notice there's no symmetry in that repetition. Now this particular fault is a dead straight line, which is a, an indicator of a vertical structure. If it's more wavy or sinuous, um, the fault is going to be inclined. Now it's hard to tell which way that's happening on a geological map. Very often there'll be clues given to you in the exam paper. Once again, if you annotate your map as you go, cross sections become more straightforward. Okay, let's think about how we'd actually do a cross-section now. If we've been working through our map, we now have uh, annotations on our map to help us understand what each of these beds are and the relationship between them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, a series of slides here, and but not reveal what it actually looks like on the cross-section. So you've got a chance to pause the video, have a go at plotting the cross-section yourself, and then checking to see if it, you've got that particular part correct. Okay, the first job is to place the edge of a sheet of paper uh, along the cross-section line of your map, mark in where we're starting and where we're finishing. Notice how I label everything up on this. Once we've done that, we can then mark the position of any geological boundaries along that line of cross-section. So I see on the piece of paper here I've marked on where each of those beds cuts across that line of cross-section. We can now put that onto our cross-sectional diagram, our topographic profile. So we take our piece of paper off the map We put it onto our profile, and like I've done here, I can mark on where each of these geological boundaries meets the surface. Okay, so we've now got we're now in a position to start drawing our cross section. We need to though try and break it down a little bit. So our next step is to mark on usually beds above unconformities any horizontal or gently dipping beds. So have a go at this on your cross section now. You know where the horizontal beds are, mark them on and draw those beds underground horizontally. Okay, if you've had a go at this, this is what your cross section should now look like. We've got those horizontal beds marked above the unconformity. Our next step is to think about any vertical in igneous intrusions, dikes or plutons that are cutting through country rock. You can see we're almost doing this uh, in reverse order of age. Plutons and dikes have steep and vertical sides, so you know where these occur on your cross section, draw them in now. It's also a good time to draw in the metamorphic aureole that's next to the pluton. Keep it parallel to the edge of the pluton that you draw. Okay, so if we've worked on this step, we should now see our cross section looking similar to this. You can see closest to D there, we've got our pluton drawn in. Notice it stops at the unconformity with the metamorphic aureole parallel to the edge of it. 
The dike, which we can see from the map, is vertical because it's a straight line cutting across uh, the country rock there, is marked in with that black line towards the middle. Our next step is to plot in any faults. Faults break beds. So before we plot beds in, we need to plot the faults that cut through them. If they are a straight line on your map, it's very easy. We can draw a vertical line. If they're not straight and they're dipping, usually there's been a question about those faults telling you how much they dip. Make sure you pick up on those clues. If you've annotated your map, you will find those. So here, labelled F, we've got the fault because the map fault on this map is vertical. Okay. Our next step is to think about the beds on this map that were folded. We know where the axial planes are because that's where the symmetry is. Mark that on your map. Then we need to plot the beds on each limb of these folds. You can use a protractor to measure in the angles um, accurately and make sure you draw in the, the symbols or labels for the, for the bed so you know which one um, you're actually dealing with we, so we don't mix up the beds. Remember we found an anticline on this map so plot that in now. So what we should have now is a cross section that looks like this. Two things to pick up on here. See how the beds continue into the metamorphic aureole, because the metamorphic aureole is just metamorphosed beds, but they stop at the fault because the fault cuts the beds and breaks and moves them. Okay, our next step is to draw in the rest of the beds, but we've worked out the structures already, so we can keep all the remaining beds parallel to the ones you've drawn in. Keep the thickness the same. Okay, make sure beds are continuous. So we should see a structure that looks like this. The final step is to add the rest of the detail to the map. Things like fold axes, displacement arrows on faults, showing where unconformities are, continuing geological boundaries like bedding planes and faults above the ground surface. Show where the, the beds have been eroded away. Have a go at that now. So what we should see is something that looks like this. This gives us all the detail that we need and will get us full marks in our exam. We can then use this to work out the geological history. We can work out which beds are the oldest, which are the youngest, What's the relationship between these beds where structural features like folding and faulting must have occurred? Have a go at that for this particular map. Draw a geological column. Okay. We've seen from this that the geological structures that you're going to find on your maps have these distinctive patterns. It's only with practice, though, that we're going to be able to recognise those patterns and start to be able to draw good, accurate cross-sections. 
This video is a start to the process. We need to take it further and get into more detail. Don't forget your interesting questions to bring to class, and I'll see you there.